Okay, here is the information on the final project. So your rubric, this is kind of what I'm looking for, and then I'm going to show you how I'm actually grading it. Um, the grading might... Um, uh, actually, I need to I need to edit the, how I'm actually going to grade it because the look of the game no longer is really on you guys. So, final class project. Your fi This class's final project is to create a game using Python Pygame. You can use the code we created in class, the Bunny versus the Badgers game, as a template for you to build your own. That means you are going to add stuff to it. You're going to change the look. You're going to add bad guys. You're going to add bosses. You're going to add levels. It cannot be the same exact game. I've had students only change the look of it and add stuff, uh, but it's the same. You are a person defending four things from things attacking from the left, attacking from the right. That's it. Don't change. Try and push yourself and do something cool. You cannot use an online tutorial to create a game. I've had students that literally turned in their code and their code was 95% from a YouTube video. And the 5% that was theirs was commented out because it didn't work. So do not. Now, that is not to say I don't know how to do blank thing in my game. I don't know how to do gravity because I want a side scroller that can jump. Google that and do a tutorial on just that part and go, okay, I've got my jumping down. I don't need that anymore. I'm going to do something else. Or if you find code online, I'm going to get to that in a sec. Uh, you are able to use any code from the bunny game, copy and paste it, whatever. I don't care. Um, so you don't have to type every single line of code. For example, if you want to use the WASD buttons to move your character, you may copy and paste those lines of code into your project. Because I don't want you guys don't have to for event in pygame.event.get prints. Just copy and paste that into your code. Um, you are also allowed to look online for any modules or bit of code that will enhance your game. For example, if there is some import blank that allows you to do, like we imported math that allowed us to do the rotation of our player. Import math and use that. Um, also, or any bits of code that will enhance your game. This is just an example. If you want to hide your mouse cursor when you're playing your game so you don't see the mouse in your on your screen, this is all you do is you this is the code pygame.mouse.setvisible. False means it's invisible and you cannot see it. When it's set to true, it is visible. Notice I also have a reference for that because we didn't learn how to do that. You have to put something like this. All you need is just the URL. And if it's three or four lines of code that you kind of mismatch together from different websites, put the websites you mismatched it from. Um, if you have questions, I will answer general questions. Meaning, this error came up. I'm not 100% sure what it means. Or I've looked and I can't find it. Can you help me? Oh, you have an error in this for loop because this for loop shouldn't be looking through this. It should be looking through that. Mr. Stolter, can you do this? How do I do this? I will lay out general, well, if you want to jump, first thing is you need gravity. Well, how do you do gravity? How do have we moved characters across the screen? Changing their, x and y. Changing their x and y value. So you just have to have a constant negative or a constant positive value, which makes your character go further away from the top left. So it's always, so your y has to always be increasing every time, no matter what. Now, in spite of that, you also need to have some sort of equation that allows you to jump. You can do the simple, I jump here. You could do the jetpack type jump, where if you hold space, your character goes, goes slowly up, and when you let go, it comes back down, like Flappy Bird. Um, or you could do uh, the type of jump where it's like a parabola, which is the best. Or you could do jump, teleport back down. It's up to you. The easiest one is probably the jump tell like the, the space the space the space bar up and do kind of a jetpack. The harder one is to do the actual loop, the actual parabola. However, online you can find how to jump in Pygame in a side scroller. So you can take all of that code you find, edit it, put it in your code, and put a, a URL right here, and you're golden. Um, 
Why isn't my so I I will do my best without giving too much away because this is your final. Um, this is wrong, so not the thir thirtieth. Um, so you can ignore that. You are allowed to work on this at home. From this moment on, I don't care where or when you work on this. Just not in other classes. Um, after so so next week you guys will. So starting next week, you guys will come in and you will just start coding. I'll do an attendance question and I'll get some Christmas music or whatever going. And you, if that's distracting to you, I won't. You guys can bring headphones. You can listen. As long as you guys are working and quiet. You may ask each other quick questions. But again, the more you ask one person, you're taking away from their final. So they may stop helping you. Just throwing that out there. Let me let me get through everything and answer questions. Um, at the end of every day, I will have an assignment for you guys to upload your code to. I've had a couple students the day before a final, and I don't know if this was on purpose or on accident, but they go, "I've lost all of my code. I don't have my final." I go, "Well, you need to turn something in tomorrow." So they work feverishly for eight hours or whatever. So by uploading to on campus every single day you will get you will never be more than one day's worth of work away if you don't turn something in it will be worth a grade so this these are easy points that if you don't turn something in every day you will lose and I won't it's just a zero I'm not gonna well I had it finished and I uploaded it late no it's by the end of the hour you you upload it it takes 30 seconds to upload something if that so you guys will upload that at the end of every school day and then that way you'll you're never more than a day away or a day or so away from your last work. Also, I will give you guys at some point I will give you a USB stick onto which everything needs to go. I need to be able to plug it into my computer and run your code, meaning your file paths need to point to the USB stick, not your computer. You will lose points if it says C users colon Mikey dot whatever blah 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 and I have to fix it. You will lose points for that. So it's very easy. Let me get through everything and answer questions. Some gameplay concepts. You need to have at least three of these uh, to get full credit. Multiplayer, power-ups, bosses, different types of ammo slash guns slash attacks, changing, changing backgrounds. When you finish the level, the background changes for the next level. Different meters for different aspects of the game, a health meter, breath meter, special action meter, etc. Changing the main character from a person to a car and having different controls, a pause menu, settings, volume, music, difficulty, pick your character, etc. All of that, I don't care. You can right. Power-ups count as one. So if you have three power-ups, that count as one that counts as one gameplay element. Um and if you think of something here that's not if you think of something that's not here go ahead and try it I'll count it probably I don't know what that could be but you know maybe you collect coins and once you get enough coins you can leave or something like that you can also instead of adding to our bunny game you can create your own I've had students create uh, stick figure fighting games two people fight each other and they have attack shield jump crouch all that I've had students do like a whack-a-mole game I've had students do a mixture, uh, like where they take, you can't see the resemblance to the code we write, but you can, like, it, that's stupid. You have one where you had to fly around collecting bugs and avoiding badger, or avoiding, like, dragons or something, or hawks or something. You were a dragon or something like that. I've had um, students do a bunch of different types of things. So you can start your own and code your own, or you can take the game and add to it. If you start your own, you still need three gameplay elements. Make sense? Yep. Um, and then let me go through how I'm going to grade this. This is going to be changed slightly because you guys are no longer, uh, the look of the game is no longer really on you. Um, so if the game is unplayable due to errors, you get, uh, if I can't play your game, you just, it's 10% off. 
gameplay mechanics, so you need at least three to get full credit. Um, game complexity, you have to tell the user, there has to be an objective, and you have to tell the user that objective. If you do not tell me how to play your game, you will lose points. If I have to figure it out, or look at your code to figure out how to play your game, you'll lose points. This is the thing most students lose the most points on. They forget to tell me how to play their game, and when I and, and I have no idea, so they lose points. It's as simple as pausing your game for 10 seconds and saying use WASD to move, mouse to shoot, shoot badgers, protect bunnies. Okay, fine, I can do that. Um, coding concept, you have to implement some, at least one thing we've never learned in class into your game. It could be something from the book that we haven't gone over, like that string stuff I was talking about earlier, or it could be something in Pygame we haven't learned. Um, it's just something we haven't learned in class. Uh, the originality, you have to, you can't just change the look of the game we made in class and add three gameplay elements. I, again, I had a student who did that. You were trying to protect the Jonas Brothers from paparazzi by throwing money at them. But there was like an action, there were some other things, but it was the exact same game. You had paparazzi front running from the left, attacking the Jonas Brothers, and you're throwing money at them instead of arrows. And I did that, no. Uh, the look of the game, this isn't for you guys. Uh, if, for whatever reason, there's no um, artwork from the art department, I'm talking with Mr. McCallum, waiting for him. Um, Mikey, I know you've been in the class. I don't want you to... Yeah, we're taking, like, pictures right now. Uh, that's, and, and maybe you guys can do what we want in a week. I don't know. But, you know... Um, so there's that. The presentation, you guys and lady will present your game, and I'm not, did you say um too many times? Did you, uh, stutter over your word? I don't care about any of that. What you come up here is you go, you plug in, this is my code, this is my game, play, 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 and in that time, you will field questions from the class and if no one has a question I will come up with a question so it's better for everyone if you guys ask the questions because I guarantee my questions will be harder than the questions you would ask just saying um, but it'd be like if I wanted to change the spawn rate of your character of your bad guys where would you go because I know there's three ways to do it you have to give me two and you could go well um, uh, um, Hang on, let me actually pull up my code before I pretend to not know what I'm doing. Um, uh, oh, I graded a bunch of stuff, so I don't have that. Um, well, this is embarrassing. Second hour in class pi game. Okay, so if this is your code, right? This is the game we wrote. We wrote in class, and, and my question to you is, how do I change the spawn? Right? If you went, um. Um, that's not that great. That shows me you don't know the code that well. If you were to go, oh, you can change this right here by increasing this number, it it will increase the spawn rate. You can also, uh, you can, well, hang on, where is the, if, here, you can change this, so you can increase this by whatever. You can also change this delta timer. So if I change this to be, uh, I can't have it be greater than 50 because I'll screw everything up, but I could make it 49. Um, I could do that. So those are the three. It'd be like, okay, you know your code. Um, so you guys do need to know your code well enough to make changes decently quick. That's probably the harder of the questions or, um, if I wanted to increase the health of the badgers, let's say you assume, let's assume you had health. Or real quick, what are two ways I can make the game harder? I can, you know, make the badgers run faster and your arrows move slower or whatever. So you just you want to you'll need to know your code well enough to be able to field questions like that. Um, 
and that's your presentation and that will happen if you are remote you will do the same thing you'll just zoom in share your screen add, and we'll just do the same thing so it might actually be you guys zoom in and share your screen as opposed to coming up here and plugging everything in uh, because then we don't have to worry about you know, are you connected? Do I have the right adapters? All that sort of stuff. So, last thing, citing work. If you use any work that's not cited, you lose 10 points. This is very, I'm very big on this. I want you guys to tell me where you got the code that we didn't learn in class. One, it helps you so that you have a reference of where you got stuff as opposed to if you write something and then next week you can't find that website anymore because of whatever. And it also helps me if you guys do something that's really cool, I will implement it later in other classes. So if you guys do find something that's awesome, that's how I did the, the rectangles. Someone did that and I was like, oh, you can do rectangle. Okay, cool. I'll make sure I tell the other class that because then you can see the hitboxes. Um, so please, please, please cite your work. Wait, so when we cite our work, we would like comment out a line and like the URL and say Just like this. So this is your code, and there's your comment. Uh, yep, that's exactly right. Yes. If we're using a function that's integrated oh. into Pi. Hey. Okay. You guys both start talking at the same time. Uh, as with Peter. Does it matter if you have a lot of cited work? Or is it a case of just your one that's cited? Depends on like. Like if it's a lot of like new imports and stuff, like like threatening, like not necessarily like the base code. Like yeah, I think that's okay. If, if like 50% of your code is cited from the internet, I'm going to be a little suspicious, but you should be okay. I don't, I'm not putting a limit on how many things you can cite. Well, yeah, no, Peter? Do we have to cite integrated functions in Pygame or in Python? Like what? Uh, or stuff like random. Do we need to learn? No, because we've learned anything we've learned in class, you don't have to cite, but anything that we haven't learned in class, you'll need to cite. Even if it's from the book, like I said, um, there's the string manipulators. So like string dot is alpha. Uh, just put chapter, you know, I think that's chapter chapter six in book or something like that. Oh, no. even though that's like an integrated function in Pygame. Oh, wait, no, no. Yeah, but if you're doing what if you just like know that stuff, or you you look through the PyCharm documentation or whatever, or the PyGame doc documentation? To document it from PyGame. Okay. So like this right here, this would result in true, but you would need to go chapter six book. Oh. Okay. If, if you use this stuff. multiple, if you use this as alpha or the string manipulators mm -hmm. multiple times, and it's like very, it's used often in your book, then just instead of doing that, just say, you know, at the top or whatever. So just, there's going to be a lot of things that we have to cite. Maybe. I've had students cite one or two things, and I've had students cite a lot more than that. So it just depends on how what you want to do in your code. Okay, questions? Catherine. That's kind of a... If you're scared to show me it, you need to change it more. I had an art teacher who said, you're allowed to take inspiration from other people, but if you're scared to show me the work that you got inspired from because you think it's too similar, then you need to change it. So just, it really depends. And I'll just, you have to show me and I, and I will let you know if it's too close or not. 
But if you have bunnies, if you have enemies coming from the right side of the screen, uh, running left, attacking non-moving pictures, and you are defending as a moving person, that's too close. However, if you are running away from zombies spawning on every side of the screen and they're all coming at you from different angles and they're following you, and you're trying to get somewhere that's a non-moving picture, that's different. So it just, yeah, it just depends. Um, what else? Josh? If we were to get help from some other person, like, you know, fiddling with the tank or something, would we have to then? Like, I'm always a little leery because just say my brother, my dad, my mom, my whoever helped me with this section. What if, what if, like, right before we're about to send, like, our dog eats our flash drive or something like that, and that's... Uh, that's why you upload it on campus every single day. <laughs> you can also save it to... Actually, you don't have access to that. I don't understand how they lose their whole presentation. That's a very good question. But I couldn't prove anything otherwise, so I, I had to get... I couldn't tell. But every time you run the code, it's saved. So, like, I don't think I've ever had a file just disappear off my computer. Now, I've saved stuff and not remembered where I saved it, which, so. Okay, anything else? Again, I will provide flash drives at some point in the following weeks for you guys to save um, everything to. What? I will make this all available online after class. I'll put it in the student. I'll make a folder called Final in the Student Resources folder, and you guys can peruse that. Once I edit, because um, I have to edit how I'm going to grade it because of uh, we no longer have to deal with the artwork. Because normally you guys would have to start looking on the internet for images and getting rid of the backgrounds and copying and pasting, putting stuff together. But um, hopefully the uh, we'll get that information. Yeah. You got yeah, you guys, I am fully confident that if you worked only in class, you could get this, you could get an A on this. Because I've gone over a lot of extra stuff that I haven't covered in the past and students have and so I think you guys will have you guys have all the information you need to add everything needed to get an A. Hundred percent. All right, any other questions, comments, concerns? Okay. Well then, wait, what? Okay, so I'm gonna put this online. So if you guys do have questions about the final, you can watch this, it's a 23 minute video. Um, that's up to you, but uh, that's it.